A Bristol man has admitted selling dogs which had been illegally imported. Attila Kovacs, who's 36 and from Redland, was given a 200-hour community order. The judge said he'd been reckless rather than dishonest and accepted that he did not know the dogs were imported. In a moment, we'll be hearing from one kennel owner who believes imported dogs pose a real risk of rabies. But first, here's Martin Jones. Natasha Underhill from Chard knows the true costs of buying an imported puppy. She bought Lola from a Welsh dealer who said she was UK bred. She fell in love instantly. She's got a gorgeous face. Gorgeous face. But Lola had been imported, probably from Eastern Europe, and too young to have had rabies injections. Well, as soon as I found out she was from Poland, I then started to think, oh my God, you know, I was really embarrassed. I didn't know, you know, would I, would she get taken away from me? Would I be able to keep her? I didn't want anybody to know because I felt a bit stupid. I was just, I don't, every emotion you could have, I think I had. Lola had to go into quarantine for several weeks, wrenched away from her new family at a cost of over £800. The charity, the Dogs Trust, says this is a growing problem. They've conducted undercover investigations into the crime gangs in Eastern Europe trading in misery. But they warn those involved in the trade are rarely brought to court. Today, this man, Attila Kovacs, was sentenced in Bristol. He admitted selling foreign-born dogs, but says he didn't know they were imported, a claim the judge accepted. Attila Kovacs had admitted selling dogs, which turned out to have been illegally imported. But the judge agreed with him that he'd been reckless in doing so, rather than deliberately dishonest. And he was sentenced to 200 hours of community service. Uh, Mr Kovacs, have you got anything to say to uh, your customers? People who bought the dogs from you, do you have anything to say to them? Gobsmacked. Absolutely gobsmacked. How he's been able to get away with his behaviour um, and convince the court in the way he did that he was virtually a victim was quite staggering. The number of dogs coming into the country is rising and trading standards say they're doing everything they can. Yes, we are doing something about it. If it occurs in Bristol, I can advise we will prioritise it and we will try and bring offenders to justice. But those who care for dogs warn that more must be done to crack down on this trade, or more families will face Natasha's dilemma. Gamble, their new puppy is free from rabies, or spend hundreds of pounds and weeks apart making sure. Martin Jones, BBC Points West, Bristol. Well, Meg Purnell runs Overhill Kennels in Pensford. They look after the dogs who have had to go into quarantine. Meg, thanks so much for coming in today. My pleasure. You really see the other end of this, don't you? Yes, we do. We see very tragic situations where owners have bought what they believe is a, a, a genuine puppy from a genuine breeder, and then within a week or so, the dog is, have to, has to come into quarantine, and they're without it for at least three weeks. Sometimes it's six or eight weeks. So what can people do? Because they might be thinking of buying possibly a design a dog, you know, as we call them nowadays. Yeah. Um, but how can they be sure this won't happen to them? The only way they can be sure is please, please, please do not buy from the internet. Go to a reputable breeder and make sure that everything has been health tested. Um, there is also an assured breeders, which the Kennel Club run. Please, please, I beg of people, don't go. If you want heartbreak, then go and buy from the internet. My, my suggestion is you do not buy from there. They will try and convince you that the puppy was born there they'll even have an adult of the same breed to say it's the mother and do not believe them can the price sometimes be a bit of a giveaway we know for example we had a french bulldog there i think didn't we yes they can be really expensive they can i think you'll find that the prices have evened a little now and of course when the people were bringing them in from abroad and they were illegal they were doing them very cheaply well of course then people identified that they were illegally imported, so they put the price up. Yeah. So by the time you've paid the price they're asking, if you then have your puppy put into quarantine, you've got another six or seven hundred pounds on top of that, yeah. which makes it a very, very much more expensive puppy. In terms of the repercussions of this, particularly to do with rabies that we were mentioning before, mm. what are your concerns there? My concerns are that there are so many. I mean, 
we just see the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds of puppies coming into this country. Many are not being picked up. We only see a tiny, tiny percentage of the ones being identified. The rest are out in the world, in this, well, in this country, not in the world. And one day we are going to have a problem. I am absolutely convinced. I hope not, but I mm. really believe we are. We haven't got much time, so it's difficult to think yes. of all the solutions that could be out there because it's so multi-layered. But what do you think would be your priority in terms of solutions? More stringent um, checks at the ports. The airports there's not a problem with because they're being checked. Everything's being checked. And more checks at the ports and people are coming through without getting checked. So I think that is very, very important. OK. Uh, it's good to talk about it, obviously, because it makes people aware. So, yes. Meg, I really appreciate you coming not in to Not at all. Thank today. you for giving Thank me the you. time. What a passionate.